Hi and welcome to a new Voldo. It's been a while since I've done the in the mail segment and a bunch of uh, items have been gathering up. So let's get to work and see what electronics items I received recently. I'm going to start with this box where I have a bunch of components purchased from a single eBay seller. I will post a link to this seller store on eBay in the description below. He has many auctions for new old stock parts. The parts are all brand name manufacturer, like for example the capacitors are Nichicon, Panasonic, the resistors are Vichy and various other brands that we all know uh, produce quality stuff. The auctions usually start at $1.58 and there aren't many bidders going after these items, so I was able to get about 300 pieces different values high quality Vichy Dale shunt resistors and a set of 100 pieces 220 microfarads Nichicon tantalum capacitors for about $17 in total plus shipping. For example, a pack of 20 pieces shunt resistors was $1.58, which is probably at least 10 times less than what I was paying for them through a distributor. Quite a bargain, so definitely check this stuff out. For sure you will find something interesting in there. And if you do place any orders, you can thank me by mentioning my name in a message to the seller. So let's take a look at uh, the different resistors that I got in here. This one is a set of 30 milliohms. In here uh, 39 milliohms, 82 milliohms, 22 milliohms, 1 ohm, 51 milliohms, 15 milliohms, and we have a large set in here. These one are 160 milliohms. There's probably like 50 shunt resistors in here. And these are the tantalum capacitors I was telling you about. These uh, should be Nichigon capacitors. So after seeing how many shunt resistors I purchased, you might think I'm a shunt resistor aficionado. But the truth is, I like uh, implementing uh, measurement of current and voltage in my projects and um, Having these uh, shunt resistors in-house kind of simplifies things and also allows me to purchase them much cheaper than they would cost through a distributor. In here I have a bunch of different gauge silicon wires which are always handy to keep in the lab. I really like having all kind of options when it comes to wiring. Sometimes I like uh, using these ones with alligator clips other times I need them like this with uh, 4 mm banana plugs and other times a combination of uh, those and uh, smaller clips. Why silicon? Well, I I'll show you in a minute the first reason because they are very very nice and flexible and also because silicon is a type of insulation material that has a higher temperature rating than PVC so compared to regular wires these silicon covered ones should be able to withstand a higher temperature rise and they should be more flexible as well which makes them great for everyday lab usage you can get these uh, pretty much everywhere online however mine are from hobby king because i find the cost to quality ratio very good for their turnage brand in here i have uh, two of these ultrasonic sensing modules I got the US015 model and uh, I don't remember exactly why I got this particular model but I'm pretty sure these were the cheapest I could get and uh, the plan was to sense the water level inside the water container. You can get uh, 5 pieces of these uh, ultrasonic sensing modules for about $6 shipped so yeah they are really really cheap. If you only want one you can get it uh, on eBay for about $1.20 free shipping. It should work as low as 2 cm in range and up to 4 meter away but I'm not really sure about that because um, the construction seems uh, very simple compared to other modules that you can find on eBay. So this one is probably the uh, weakest performer out of the bunch. 
although I'm just guessing here I haven't tested any of these. Code for reading these sensors should be widely available for the popular Arduino and uh, right now these will just go into my uh, sensor parts storage bin. I'm also going to put a link in the description for the SR04 model which might have better specs but they're a bit more expensive at uh, $1.93 for one piece. This is a digital voice recorder that uses uh, micro SD cards for storage and according to its specs it can manage cards up to 32 gigs but in practice that is way above what you need considering the battery life of the device and what amount of data it can record in that time. I have already opened one of these and uh, found its battery life to be somewhere around 6 hours. I have even hacked the one I opened for testing and attached four 18650 batteries using this uh, battery holder and I was able to get a much higher battery life but still the recording file size didn't go over 4 gigabytes so I can conclude they have quite a nice compression algorithm. I was also curious about the chip they're using for handling all this and it turns out it's uh, a chip called AC1452D6 for which I was unable to find any information but it's definitely a single chip solution for recording, file system handling, USB interface as well as LiPo charging. The audio quality and level is ok, so if you're looking for an audio recorder you can get one of these for $6.58 free shipping and the link is in the description below. In here I have a, a debugger programmer for STM8 or STM32 microcontrollers and this one I believe it's called the ST-Link V2 let me just open this uh, anti-static bag now of course this one is a Chinese clone and not the original but the tool supports the SWD 4-wire interface as, as well as the SWIM interface if you remember my automatic plant watering system I was initially planned planning on doing that project on an STM8 microcontroller but I didn't have the programmer at that time so I just purchased one to have in the lab for future projects and you'll probably be seeing this one in uh, future videos it was quite cheap at uh, $3.33 free shipping and it continues to amaze me how cheap these development tools are today yes I agree it's just a clone but just 7 or 8 years ago Clones of uh, programmers or debuggers used to cost upwards of $50. So the market has definitely changed quite a bit. Anyway, link for this product is in the description below. In here I have a transmitter receiver pair that works on 433 MHz. Let me just get these out of the bag. I just placed the resistor next to them so you can see how small they are. These are based on the scene 115 and uh, SYN480R chips with uh, ASK modulation. You will typically use these for uh, remote control applications or sending any low volume data wirelessly. These chips operate from uh, 1.8 volts to 3.6 making them ideal for small battery powered devices. Their maximum data rate is uh, 10 kilobits per second so as I've said good for remote control or low volume data transmission. They also have a disadvantage, you have to do your data encoding before sending it so for example you need to implement a Manchester encoding decoding scheme on your Arduino before sending the data through these modules. There are also some versions that include a small 8-bit micro on board that handles all the encoding and decoding part and you just get a simple UART interface which is much easier to use but those as expected are just a bit more expensive so links for these modules are in the description below this one is a DMX512 decoder with a 3 channel output and this 3 channel output makes it ideal for driving RGB LEDs up to a maximum of 12 amps or so they claim I would assume the 12 amps are divided across all 3 outputs making it capable of 4 amps per channel but they might be stretching the limits of this uh, small volume of this small module with these figures. I think it would be safe to drive something less than 4 amps per channel with this module. 
The data input to this module is uh, RS485, so you can probably see the link with the uh, next product I'm going to show, an RS485 to TTL converter. The module seems to have two RS485 transceivers on board, one for the input and another one for the output, which is uh, useful when chaining more of these modules together. Here is a picture of how this uh, module can be connected to drive RGB LED strips. Truth is, I never worked with uh, this DMX protocol either, so I thought I'd get one of these modules and just have in the lab if I ever decide to do any work on this subject. The module was uh, $5 with free shipping from eBay, and you can find the link for this product in the description below. The next product is a TTL to RS485 converter. Let me just open the anti-static bag. This one is probably based on the MAX485 transceiver I see, or some clone of it. I never really done any work on uh, RS485, it's more oriented to industrial applications. The RS485 standard has advantages over RS232, uh, mainly because of using a differential twisted pair for communication. This way you get better noise immunity and uh, higher working distances. I don't have any project where I need the RS485 right now, but the module is very cheap and nice to have in the lab for when I will be needing it. You can get two of these modules for $2.15, free shipping, and you can find the link in the description. I also got four tubes of this um, heatsink thermal adhesive. This is the white silicon type thermal adhesive, and you can apply this paste to secure heatsinks where you don't have the option of mounting screws. And if you remember my bench LED lights upgrade video, I used this kind of thermal adhesive to secure the rigid aluminum LED strips to the heatsink. As you can see, these are vacuumed inside these uh, plastic bags individually. So I, uh, I'm guessing they do this to ensure uh, you don't accidentally get a dry tube. You can get uh, one tube of this thermal adhesive for $1.62 free shipping. It would be nice to find them in larger tubes, but I can't seem to find any. Maybe the shipping cost would be higher than the product itself, or maybe they don't have a very long shelf life. I also got a pair of these uh, Y-shaped uh, water splitters, and I plan on using these for an upgrade to my uh, automatic plant watering system. So I will be splitting the water supply to more pots during the upgrade. Link for these is in the description below. This is a set of 5 pieces of FR4 double sided prototyping PCB. I believe these ones are the smallest you can get at uh, 20 by 80 millimeters. However, there are plenty of options you can choose from. They're reasonable quality and you can get these for anything where you need this kind of uh, prototyping PCB which has plated through holes. This set of 5 was uh, $3.24 with uh, free shipping and I'll post a link in the description where you can find uh, these prototyping PCBs as well as uh, many other sizes which are available. This is a metal punch tool or maybe you could use it for something else than metal also but I haven't tried that. This thing has a spring mechanism inside and we'll use that spring to generate an impact for the marking pin, leaving a very nice precise mark on your metal surface. These marks are useful for drilling because they prevent your drill bit from sliding away on a shiny metallic surface or just as a mark for general alignment of things. Let me just show you how this thing works on a PCB. So what you have to do is uh, align the tool where you plan on having your mark and you just have to press really hard on the tool. There you have it, you can get uh, really nice and precise marks using this tool. I will definitely be using this one from now on and it wasn't expensive at all, just uh, $3.50 with free shipping. Although this item is not electronics related, I will show it anyway because it's kind of interesting. This is a monocular. I like outdoor activities like uh, hiking and it happened quite a lot to spot wildlife but it was often too far away to be seen clearly so I have decided to get myself one of these and have it with me when I go for a hike in the mountains. 
I was looking for something cheap but also something that could have a decent optical quality and magnification. I stopped at this uh, Panda model on Banggood and the price was very good, about uh, $13 free shipping due to a price discount because it would normally be about $22. The magnification is uh, advertised as uh, 10x which is about right because I gave this a try at uh, 150 meters and I could identify someone's face. I'm pretty happy with the build quality as we can see it does come with this uh, uh, carry pouch and uh, the feel is uh, all uh, rubbery and soft silicone type so it feels really okay uh, quality wise it's definitely worth the uh, $13 I paid for it. The only downside quality wise are these uh, rubber end caps which don't seem to fit very well and they uh, easily fall. This one on the uh, smaller end seems to fit a bit better so it doesn't uh, disconnect just as easily but the front facing one just falls away. I guess you won't be seeing this one in any other videos of mine because its place is in my backpack but if you'd like to get one link is in the description below. Thank you for watching this in the mail episode and as always if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and follow me on twitter where I share interesting electronic stuff. See you next time.